the final four is now over. We have our national championship game set. Kansas will face off against North Carolina. Kansas battles, plays very well, and beat Villanova to reach the national championship. Bill Self is seeking his second national championship with the Kansas Jayhawks and his third trip. UNC faced off against Duke in one of the best basketball games and one of the best Final Four games we have ever seen. UNC walks off the court, beating Duke once again as they head to try to beat Kansas in the national title game. Coach K walks off the court for the final time as he heads into retirement. Or will he unretire? We're going to discuss the Final Four games, get a little snippet of the national championship and we'll talk about Coach K here on the Coach Steve Show podcast. Welcome back to the Coach Steve Show podcast, uh, where you get all your sports information, talking to football coaches all over the country. Anything with sports, it's going to happen here. Uh, thank you for watching and or listening. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel, hit please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, helps out the algorithm that I don't understand. Um, if you're listening to the podcast in audio form, please rate it, especially on Apple. Please give it a uh, you know four or five star review. Uh, Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Leave a review on Spotify or Apple. Uh, Again, it can be found anywhere you listen to your podcast. And then also please check out the Belly Up Media Network. I still believe it's bellupsports.com, but they're changing to Belly Up Media. There's stuff out there for everybody. There's podcasts, there's blogs, there's different things out there. So uh, check out the Belly Up Media Network and the link in the description below. Um, Great stuff for everybody. Uh, this podcast is also brought to you by Coach Stone Football. It is back to the basics, books, and drills. All you football coaches out there that are heading to your spring ball, maybe you're heading to the summer. Uh, you know, we're just looking to get simple and find some drills. We're always looking for drills. Uh, and Coach Stone takes the pressure off of us when he creates his back to the basics drill manuals. If you go to coachstonefootball.com and check out all of the uh, books he has, he has tons of them, and he's continuing to make more. The guy never stops. He breathes, lives, and breathes football. Uh, Thank you, Coach Stone, for sponsoring the podcast. Again, CoachStoneFootball.com. Click on back to the basics football drill manuals. So, Final Four is now over. Our national championship game is set. Uh, Kansas will be facing off against the North Carolina Tar Heels. It was Both games were great. The big one everyone wants to talk about is UNC and Duke, which we'll get to, but we have to talk about Kansas and Villanova first. Again, we talked about before, Villanova had to overcome Justin Moore's injury. And Kansas came out hot, and then Villanova started to battle back. But they even talked about, and I've talked about on the last podcast, is can they overcome that injury? Uh, Justin Moore, you know, I said you have to find a way to get those points. You know, he averages over 15 points, so many assists a game. When a guy goes down like that, you're going to miss a couple things. One, the minutes. He played a ton of minutes. He was second the team in minutes. Can you find a a guy or two to to give you those minutes. Then the leadership out of everything, the leadership, the defense, people don't talk about defense, the type of defense he plays. Can you battle and overcome that and find some guys that are able to do that? And Villanova started off slow. Then they started to battle back. But I said this, Kansas is a very balanced team, very balanced. And they, they run, they run, they can, they have two tempos, which is really only two, but they can run up and down the court with anybody. But if you make it slow, them slow it down, they can also slow it down. That's what makes them very dangerous. And another thing Kansas does really well is rebounding. They'll rebound, they play good defense, and they're very good at pass faking into the post and get the ball to the corner for a shot. And what makes Kansas even more dangerous? If they're hitting threes. And that's what happened to Villanova last night. Kansas just was hitting threes. Um, We'll look at team stats. 
Kansas shot 53.7% field goal percentage. They were also 13 of 24 from three. They shot 54.2% from three. They were 10 of 13 on their free throws. Rebounds, they had 35 rebounds to 29 from Villanova. 25 defensive rebounds. They outdid them in assists with 18. They had four steals. They blocked the ball four times. Um, they only turned the ball over seven times. Now, Villanova only turned it nine times. But when you turn the ball over seven times, you're putting yourself in a great spot uh, to win the game. And their largest lead was 19. When you get a 19-point cushion, it's very hard to battle back from that. Kansas gets the win 81-65. to 65. Kansas was just on a just on a just on a mission. Um, I'm not saying if they had Justin Moore for Villanova that they would have won. Um, they still had guys that played well. A lot of guys play a lot of minutes. They had five guys. Uh, well, they had Gillespie and Daniels play 39 minutes. So Villanova did not rotate much off of their bench. They said besides Ant- Antoine. Um, he played 19 minutes off the bench, but again, you have to find minutes from guys to kick, to, uh, make up for Justin Moore. Um, Slater had 16 points for them. Gillespie had 17. Daniels had 13. Um, Dixon had seven and Samuels had nine. But the thing that Kansas had again was the three point shooting and pretty good at looking down at McCormick in the post. Uh, he was 10 to 12 had 25 points. Um, Abajay, I cannot say his name. He had 21 points. And they were just, Kansas was very good at scoring the two, which helps open up three, which I'm old school. That's what I believe. If you can score in the post, you can dribble drive and shoot the ball. It helps you score the three. Kids today just want to shoot three left and right. But that opens up the three-pointer. And people forget that. And again, when Kansas wants to go up tempo, they're very good at it. They're very good at getting the rebound and going. They're very lengthy. If you guys remember watching Baylor last year, when they won the national title, Baylor was very lengthy. They were very quick. Kansas is lengthy and very quick. Uh, They do play, Bill Self is known for getting them to play fundamentally sound basketball. They do fundamental stuff very well. They pass the ball well. It's well, they only have seven turnovers. They play good defense trying to keep you out of the lane, and they're very good at outletting the ball and getting fouled. Kansas is very good at that, and Villanova is a good basketball team. It's a good basketball team. That's why they're number two in their in their region. That's why they made it to the Final Four. But it is hard to overcome leadership and defense when Justin Moore went down. So the emotions of that is hard to overcome, especially when Kansas is very, very confident and when Kansas has a team built the way they have it built. And when you have a team built that way, you're going against Bill Self, who has coached just a little bit. It's hard to overcome. And then to top it all off, when the other team, Kansas, is cannot miss from three. When they shoot over 50% from three, but they're also shooting over 50% regular field goal, it's difficult. That is a difficult thing to overcome. Villanova could not overcome it. They could not. They got close. I believe they cut the lead to eight, eight or six at one point, but then Kansas just... They're very good at swarming on defense. The length bothers people, and they're good at getting the ball in the post when they need to. And when they do get the ball in the post, they are good at moving, cutting to the basket, getting open. Uh, They're very good at passing out of double teams from the post, which we saw against Villanova. And if Kansas plays like this, they can win the national title. Bill Self is seeking his second national title. I, I thought he had more, you know. Maybe I'm not doing my full due diligence, but, you know, I thought he had more. Now, he's coached in – this will be his third national title game. But apparently he hasn't won since 2008. I thought he had won one since then. He's been coaching a long time. Um, And I'll repeat this when we talk about the next game. But this just shows when I don't want to bring too much of Illinois into this because they weren't here. But this shows when a school commits to a coach and 
they're winning games in the title game, they're winning their conference, and they're doing those type of things. This is the type of stuff that happens if you commit to that coach and you're winning games. I know basketball is different than football, but Kansas committed to Bill Self. He won them a national title. He's gotten there before. Now he's going back. Um, just, just a great time. He coached at Illinois too. People, this is Illinois hell right now, uh, which we'll get to the next game here. But you know, when you got UNC face, facing Kansas, Bill Self used to coach at U of I. He helped recruit the guys that were in that 2014. And then UNC beats Illinois in the national title game in the 0405 season. This is Illinois hell right now for the, us. Uh, but Kansas is very – they can win the national title. And if they, they can play at any pace, but they're very good at the type of tempo they want to play at. They're very good at dictating it because they're good at rebounding. They're good at steals. They're good at swarming defense and passing. They're very good at passing. So and then when they're hitting the threes on top of that, it's it's a combination that you're just not going to win. Like they had 18 assists, that's huge uh, compared to Villanova's 12. Um, and again, the big thing is they only turned the ball over seven times, and then Villanova had 11 fouls and Kansas only had eight. So they're very good at being disciplined in the foul game. So Kansas beats Villanova 81 to 65. Their largest lead was 19. Um, they scored 40 in the first, 41 in the second, so very much similar. Uh, Villanova only scored 29 in the first, 36 in the second. So Kansas is off to the national title game where they will face the University of North Carolina. Before we talk about Duke and UNC, the football coaches, if you're still listening, uh, your big guys that are going to be in spring ball or going into the summer. They take a lot of hits. That's why it's the best position in football to be an offensive defensive lineman. But that's a lot of hits they take because they hit in practice all the time. They're going to hit in the game. That's a lot of blows. And that's a lot of, you know, they're not using their head, but that just hits, you know, that, you know, they take a lot. And there's a way to protect those shells and reduce their pain of blows. Those guys take each and every time. And it's Guardian Caps. If you go to guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and use the code 15 off, you will save 50% off your order. It's worn by over five NFL teams and 200 plus colleges like Oklahoma, Alabama, Penn State, uh, and much, much more. You know, the big time, if, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. And I'm here to save you guys money because I understand fundraising, budgets, and everything else. So I'm here to save you money. So again, if you click the link in the description below, we'll go to guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and use code 15 off OFF. It's going to save you 15% off your order. Uh, let them know that I sent you. You can buy one, two, three, four, five, a hundred. Doesn't matter. It's going to save you money. Uh, so go do that for me, please. And thank you. Thank you, Guardian Caps, for sponsoring the podcast. And it, let's protect those shells. It is going to protect them by 20 to 33%, which is huge. So go do that. Go save yourself some money. And got not done yet, guys. Special teams is a third of the game in football. And believe it or not, it starts with your kicker. That's the very first thing people think about with special teams is kicking. And if you have a young developing kicker or you just want a kicker that can consistently get the ball into the end zone, I it, believe it or not, it's probably the T. Those orange T's, they don't do it no more. Uh, you need an upgrade T. So if you go to launchpadkickofft.com, you can get the sh just that. The T has strategic built with flaps where you can place the ball however you want. It gives you a strategic option on squib games, onside kicks. Yes, there is strategic options for kicking if you didn't know when you buy it it will come with a pamphlet to exactly tell you how to lay the football to help you with kicks onside kicks and even kicking into the end zone consistently so if you go to launchpadkickoff.com slash css and then at checkout use the code css it's going to save you 10 percent off your order or if you buy the four pack you will get the fourth one free so you're only paying for three Again, I'm here to save you money. So launchpadkickofft.com slash CSS and use a code CSS at checkout. It will save you 10% off your order or buy the four pack. You'll get that fourth one free. Thank you, Launchpad Kickoff T, for sponsoring the podcast. So the second game that leads us to the national championship game was UNC and Duke. The story going in was UNC ruined Duke's last regular season game, which was Coach K's last game, home game at Duke because he is retiring this year. Every person in America, unless you are a Duke fan, rooted for North Carolina last night. And for us Illinois fans, we were very torn. Do we root for the team that beat us in the national championship game? 
or we root for a guy that you may not like. Now, before we get into bashing Coach K, let's give the even if you hate him with every ounce of your soul and your being, we have to give him the respect that is due. He has coached for a very, very long time. Very long time. His overall record is 1,202 wins and 368 losses. That's a .766 winning percentage. 1,202 wins, that's a lot. At Duke, he had 1,129 wins, 309 losses. That's a .785 win percentage. He led Duke to 15 ACC championships, collecting 535 ACC regular season wins, 466, uh, or excuse me, 69 tournament wins. It is more than any coach ever. And then he has five national championships in 1991, 1992, 2001, 2010, and 2015. 13 Final Four appearances, tied for the most in NCAA history so i don't care if you hate the guy with every ounce of your being i don't care if he's hurt you i don't care what he's done he deserves the respect and i also have to give the university of duke or whatever whatever duke university whatever it is you have to give them respect for sticking with him now he won championships so we kind of help him stay around but the times that they did they went a long time they go years in between without winning titles. They easily could have said, you know what? We're not necessarily winning right now. Kick rocks. Kind of like what you have, some U of I fans are saying about Coach Underwood. You know, like, oh, we got to do this, so let's get rid of it. They stick with Coach K. So it shows when you stick with a coach and give him time, you're going to win games. You're going to get to the Final Four. Same thing with, like, Tom Izzo was another perfect example. Now that Coach K is leaving. So – I am not a Coach K person. Um, I necessarily don't hate him. Like, if you guys watch Barstool, Big Cat and them, they don't like him. I'm not saying that. But I don't root for him either. And I've always been torn between Duke and North Carolina because of North Carolina and Michael Jordan connection. Okay. But then they beat Illinois in the National Championship game, and I've never fully gotten over that because, you know, I have not been alive for a U of I championship the only thing for you, I've been alive for is in the 90s when they were pretty good. The Big Ten Championship uh, in 2004 and 5, uh, going to the Rose Bowl in football, like that type of stuff. But I've not been around for a national title. I've been alive for the Bulls winning a championship. I've seen my favorite player, Kobe Bryant, win championships. I've even seen the Chicago Cubs win a World Series, but I've not seen U of I done it. So North Carolina has taken that. So that's why it's always been that way. So this game. Kind of was okay if Duke won, but I picked North Carolina to win. I said coming in that North Carolina was going to be tougher, but I also said this would be one of the best tournament games, Final Four games we have ever seen, and I was right on all of them. This was one of the best basketball games of the year, if not for one of the longest times. It will go down in history as one of the best games we watched. It will go down as one of the best Final Four games we have seen. But I also said North Carolina was going to be tougher. I said they were going to have confidence. I said there will be times Duke's going to come out firing. And they did. They came out and played well at the beginning. There was some nerves on both sides. But this was back and forth. Times there were Duke. It seemed like Duke was going to run away with it if they got up by four or six. It seemed like they were going to run away with it. But North Carolina, like I said, is an extremely tough team. Extremely tough team, and if you haven't figured that out because of how they've gotten here as an eight seed, where nobody, I don't believe you, I don't believe you that people really deep down thought that they would get to the Final Four, if not to the National Championship game. So, we're going to go over stats. Largestly, Duke had was seven. So, when they got up by seven, it just seemed like they were going to run away with it because of the circumstances. Largest lead for North Carolina was six. So, anytime you we felt... Like the roof was going to pop off, and they were just going to run away with it. The other team wouldn't let them, and that's why this was a great game. Uh, North Carolina shot 42% to Duke's 41%. Three-point 
North Carolina shot 38.5%. Duke only shot 22.7%. So good defenses by both sides. Uh, free throw percentage, North Carolina was 17 of 24 for 70%. Duke was 12 of 20 for 60%. So both sides did not shoot particularly well from the free throw. And rebounds, this is huge. I said North Carolina was tough, and it could come down to rebounding. North Carolina had 50 rebounds to Duke's 47. North Carolina had 33 defensive rebounds and 17 offensive rebounds. That is huge. Now, Duke was very disciplined in not turning the ball over. They only turned the ball over four times. North Carolina had 10 turnovers. So when you look at Duke on paper, you're like, man, they probably should have won the game. Now, North Carolina walked away at the win, 81-77. to 77. People are going to talk about Duke's free throw shooting. 12 of 20, they make a couple more in the game's tie. They could still be playing right now. But I can make that same argument with North Carolina with 17 of 24 free throws. Fouls. North Carolina had uh, 19. Duke had 18. No technical fouls. So it's pretty evenly matched. And I said that. I said this type of rivalry game, like if this, if you looked at it, a number two seed versus an eight seed, if this eight seed was, I, I don't know, any other team against Duke, Duke probably wins this game. But since it's North Carolina, it's a, it's just like another rivalry game. So it's going to go either way. The big thing with North Carolina is they never really got rattled. When Duke, it seemed like Duke was going to take off. When it was close, this, and I talked about the pressure could be on Duke, obviously, saying we got to get Coach K to the final or to the national championship game. North Carolina, the only type of pressure for them is. We don't want to be the team that lets Coach K get to the Final Four. And when, so when Duke thought it was going to take off, they could let all of that creep in. All of that creep in. And say, man, they're about to take off everything else. A big thing with North Carolina, they don't sub. They subbed three guys. Three. They had two guys play 40 minutes. Black and Love played 40 minutes. Monique played 38. Davis played 36. Baycott or Basic, I can't say his last name, played 33 minutes. Johnson off the bench played nine minutes because there was a couple foul troubles. That's why. They didn't sub a person in the second half to like eight minutes left in the game. They don't sub, which makes... When you see the fouls, I don't think that necessarily tells the full story. To me, when you can only when you don't have to really sub, that tells you how good your starters are. But that tells me how disciplined they are with the rebounding, with the fouls. Um, there was a couple foul issues. Uh, they did have one guy foul out. Said nineteen total. But I mean, if you look at it, you have one guy foul out, and you're telling me you only play eight guys, and one of them only played for a minute. The next guy only played three minutes, and probably the reason why your next guy came in and played nine minutes because the other guy fouled out. That's huge. Um, and then just the poise of North Carolina. The the last stretch there where it was going back and forth. North Carolina to be up by one, come down and hit a three in the face of adversity. It was huge. Absolutely huge. And then it kind of helps when Love has 28 points. Davis has 18 points. Monique had 14 points. Basic had 11 points. Black had eight points. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Um, for Duke, other guys struggled. Um, now off the bench, you had Keels come off the bench and play 29 minutes because they did have foul issues. He has 19 points off the bench. Uh, but Cherno had 20 points. Moore Jr. had 10 points. So you had some starters not step up scoring, but they rebounded well. Uh, their free throws hurt them. Now, you'll take shooting 41%. You hope it was more. But again, it's a rivalry game, so things were just kind of out the window. But this is what I'll say. Duke, you could say what you want. They lost 81 to 77. You could say what you want. They did not crack under the pressure. They started off a little slow, but so did North Carolina. They got up by seven at one point, but they allowed North Carolina to come back, but no lead was safe. The Duke players did not crack under the amount of pressure of, we have to get this legend to the championship. They didn't crack. Yeah, they lost. 
but they didn't get blown out. They battled. They did the things they needed to. They just had to shoot better and shoot better from the free throw line. But they didn't do. They didn't crack. You know, I talked about that's how North Carolina could win, as if the amount of pressure on Duke could get the better of them, and it never did. It never got the better of them. North Carolina is just good. They're better than what we all thought they were this year, including myself. North Carolina was not on the radar to make the tournament, wasn't on the radar to get to the Final Four, and definitely not the championship. But it, And then also, it's a rivalry game. No, no matter how you slice it, it's a Final Four game, but it's also a rivalry game, one of the biggest rivalries in sports ever. So now, North Carolina sends Duke home. Coach K is now done, and everybody is partying about it. And here's why. People don't like – this is the same thing why I'm an Alabama – I'm a Nick Saban guy, but say they with Alabama. They're tired of seeing Alabama always winning. People don't like winners. But the thing with Coach K, and I talked about it last time when we talked about this, was there are times where he makes it about himself. It seemed like the retirement was made about himself. He'll make comments about, yeah, you know, it makes him cringe about how people make it about himself. I think the reason why people were really happy that he lost was because of this retirement tour of this – this party for him. And then there are these cameras around making this documentary. Now we just have to accept that he's he, he might be the greatest basketball coach of all time. There's debates on who and everything else. So let's just say one of the best basketball coaches we have ever seen. Of course, there's going to be a documentary about him, especially his last ride. It's just what's going to happen. So this, I think if he would retire today, well, first of all, he never announced retirement. People may not hate him as much yesterday. So if he would announced it today, I think it'd be okay. But it was how the whole tour was handled, um, comments made, how it was mainly about him and not about the team. And I know some of it's out of his control, but that's why people were looking at him to lose. And again, it goes back to people don't like to see a coach like that win all the time. It's the same with Nick Saban. People are tired of seeing Nick Saban win. Uh, people start to get tired of Dabo Sweeney winning. Uh, they want to see different people winning, and that's why they want the college football um, expansion, which I'm all for the playoff expansion. Um, but it's the same type of thing. So your your hardcore Duke fans, or if you're a fan of a coach and you can get past some of the stuff on Coach K, those are the people that are going to support him. So that's why I want to say – we have to give him the respect for coaching at Duke for so long. Uh, what he's accomplished in national championships, final four appearances, the wins. Will we ever see a coach like that again? Is going to be the question that we've seen. You know, is Bill Self going to be that type of coach at Kansas? Roy Williams was a coach kind of like that in North Carolina. Dean Smith way back in the day, Bob Knight. So, do you always see these type of coaches? No. Like we would love to see Brad Underwood be that at Illinois, but it is hard to see some of these coaches do what he's done. So we do have to give him that respect. But at the same time, I think we were all kind of happy because of um, the constant always being in the mix. And the, it was just this tour, I think, this tour that kind of looked like it was made about himself. That's kind of where I think more of the hatred come from. People didn't like it to begin with. This kind of escalated it. Um, name and, they got the court name after him while he was coaching. Um, that type of stuff, I think, needs to happen when they're gone. So I like give this coming week, if they came out one day and said, we're going to name the court after – Coach Krzyzewski, perfect. But you did it while he was there. Then you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, then people got mad because, like, North Carolina or somebody was, a, I think it might have been them, didn't celebrate the last time they're playing him in the regular season or something or the possible last time. Like, first of all, it's North Carolina. They're not going to like him. Second of all, who cares? I don't think a team should celebrate that and say, this is the last time we're ever going to play Coach K. Like, you could shake his hand and tell him, you know, I appreciate everything you've done for college basketball and everything else. But while we're on, you could be best friends with that coach. But when you're on the court, you're not friends with him until the buzzer's over. And then you go shake his hand and then you say, okay, either they beat you or they didn't, blah, blah. So I'm not necessarily mad if a team didn't celebrate him because that's not what it's about. It's like, hey, you're not our coach. Like, you know, you, whatever. So those are the type of things I think kind of led to that. But he is a legend. He, we have to give him the respect that's due. So we 
as of right now, as Coach K unretires, which he could, lose to North Carolina. As your North Carolina gave him his very first loss at Duke and gave him his last loss. Could he pull a Tom Brady come out of retirement? Probably not. I'm 98% sure. But there is that small percentage where he might be like, oh, man, to lose to North Carolina is my last game. I should probably come out of retirement. But as of right now, the, the era is over at Duke. Coach K is now gone. He is retired off from the sunset, and we have our national championship game set. Kansas will face off against North Carolina. And the keys to the national championship is going to be, is North Carolina, if their energy is done, because they had to ex- they had to use every ounce of energy they had to beat Duke. So the keys for Kansas is they have to continue to control the pace of the game. North Carolina is going to come in and try and is going to battle you for rebounds. It ain't going to be like Villanova. So North Kansas is going to have to they're going to have to ball out. They're going to have to lay it all out to get the rebounds. They're going to have to continue to shoot the ball well. And they're going to have to try to get North Carolina in foul trouble. North Carolina is very disciplined in that spot. So what Kansas needs to do is push the tempo, get to the lane, and if they get North Carolina in foul trouble and force some of these guys that they don't rotate because they stick with their starters for a long time in the game, to force these guys on their bench to come in and play, that will put Carolina in a bind. And then we're going to see about North Carolina because, I mean, it's going to be a great game. This go, it's going to be a very, very great game. But did North Carolina use a lot of emotional energy to beat Coach K again like they did at the end of the regular season? So we're going to have to see because they play you know, very quickly. You get the day off, and then you play you know, on Monday. So we're going to see how much energy do they expend, how much emotional energy do they expend, how tired are these starters going to be? Because Kansas rotates guys. Um, and not saying Kansas easily beat Villanova, but they didn't have quite the battle like North Carolina did. So the keys to this is how much energy is North Carolina going to have left in the tank? Is the type of shooting percentage they had against Duke, if they continue that, is it going to put them in a bad spot against Kansas? And Kansas is going to have to continue to shoot the ball well. They are going to have to battle North Carolina and get three bounds because North Carolina is a tough, tough physical team. So Kansas is going to, have to try to match the physicality. They're going to have to push the ball and try to get North Carolina in foul trouble to force them to get in foul trouble, to get the guys on their bench into the game and force them to make plays. If Kansas loses because North Carolina's bench comes in and scores a lot of points and makes a lot of plays, they're going to live with that. But those are the keys for Kansas. They're going to have to continue to shoot the ball well and do those type of things. North Carolina, just depends on how much energy you've got left. Are they going to have their legs under them? Um, and then they're going to try to control the pace, but Kansas can play at any pace. But if they get caught up in North Carolina or uh, Kansas's pace, they're not going to win. Um, people are really looking at Kansas to win, and I am too. I am looking at Kansas Jayhawks and Bill Suff to come away with the title game because of the way they play, their length, they do rebound well. They're they're fast, and they're very good at getting the ball in the post, and they're good at passing outside the post, which if they shoot like they did, North Carolina is in trouble. So I am picking the Kansas Jayhawks to come away as national titles, and that will be two in a row for the Big 12 after Baylor won it last year uh, to bring it home. Uh, but So I'm picking Kansas. So um, that wraps up our final four talk. Coach K is off into the sunset. Let's see if he goes coaches, if LeBron coaches, gets him to go to the Lakers, uh, which I think would be pretty funny. Um, But right now he is off into the sunset. Uh, North Carolina will play Kansas in the national title game. I am picking Kansas. Um, But that wraps us up. Please hit the like button and subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Uh, Twitter's at Coach underscore Steve 72. Facebook page, Coach Steve Show. like and subscribe, uh, leave a rating um, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, check out all the other episodes. Uh, check out all the affiliates in the description below. Um, thank you guys for watching and or listening. And like Coach K, we are scooting on out.